Hello everyone, welcome to ACMATH. Today we're going to talk about section 5.2, Angle, Sum, and Difference Identities. So first I have a question for you, and you can look at this. Is this, uh, the question is, is this statement true or is this statement false? Now here we've chosen angles that you know how to evaluate. Cosine of pi over 2 evaluates to 0. Uh, cosine of pi over 4 evaluates the square root of 2 over 2 and evaluates the square root of 2 over 2 again. In this case it seems pretty clear that 0 is not equal to the sum of two positive numbers so it appears that this statement is false. But do you see why this statement might be true or why someone might think that this statement is true? It is, a, it is very true that pi over 2 is equal to pi over 4 plus pi over 4. And so we have a situation where if you have some angle inside of a trig function, this is absolutely legal to split it up, that's okay. Uh, but then if you want to evaluate this sum, what's not okay is to divide, or like split the trig apart. Uh, so you can't um, split that that trig apart you can't divide the argument out like that um you know this is not the same as multiplication this is not like distributing the cosine to both terms does not work and you know your example here of, of the actual numbers is a pretty good reason to say why that does not work on the other hand if there was some way to evaluate this cosine expression it would be really helpful because there do turn out to be a lot of times where you would like to do something like that. One of the problems we're going to do later is cosine of 75 degrees. 75 degrees is not on your unit circle, so it's going to really help if we can split that up into something like cosine of 45 degrees plus 30 degrees. So notice that we have like a sum of two angles we know. Uh, now, in the original example, pi over 2 and pi over 4 were all angles we could evaluate, but here, 75, we have no idea how to evaluate that cosine, but it, maybe there'd be a way to split it up. So, it turns out there is a way to split up angles like this. Um, splitting up the angle is okay, but then what do you do after that? That's the question. It turns out there's an entire set of identities that tells us exactly how to do this. And the identities are right here. Um, this is copied from your book. Uh, a couple things. You'll notice, and we'll move you down here a little bit. We're going to redo that problem with the identities. You'll notice this is a Greek alpha, and this is a Greek letter beta. In this context, I always just call them A and B. You could also think about them I've seen in our book in terms of X and Y. Um, but, you know, we use alpha and beta, I think, just because we're really used to doing something like cosine of theta, which is also a Greek letter. So kind of the idea is we're using Greek letters to represent angles inside of our, our trig arguments. Um, but you can use any sort of letter you want. And so what you'll notice is that you have an identity for cosine of angle plus angle. But it's not equal to cosine A plus cosine B like we kind of said in the original, it's equal to something a little more complicated. You have cosine A times cosine B minus sine A times sine B. So you end up having to do a cosine and a sine, which is very weird, very interesting. We'll prove this in a little bit. Um, there are similar identities for angle subtraction. We'll prove that one as well. Um, this actually is really the same as angle one. If you'll notice that these two statements are almost the same, the only difference is one has subtraction inside and the other has addition inside. With cosine, you'll notice that if you're adding angles, then you are subtracting uh, in the identity. And if you're subtracting angles, you're adding in the identity. With sine, if you're adding angles, you're adding in the identity, and also sine, uh, cosine went cosine and cosine. Sine goes sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B. And these are obviously a little tricky, right? They're, they're very technical. They're, they're kind of hard to, to memorize. So like for, I would uh, do your homework today 
with a copy of these identities sitting in front of you. Because the last thing you want is to, to be able to perfectly understand a problem, but then just be using the wrong identity because you remembered it wrong. So I would have these sitting in front of you. I certainly plan to. I think I have them copied next to all of my problems. And slowly through usage, you will actually learn and memorize them. Um, but I, I uh, totally understand how complicated they are right now. So we have some alphas, we have some betas, we have some sines and cosines. Let's just put this to use. Um, so this is, again, just the example from above. If I wanted to evaluate cosine of pi over 2, but say that my pi over 2 button was broken on the calculator. Um, I know there's not a pi over 2 button. I could write this as cosine of pi over 4 plus pi over 4. That's always legal. But then what I could do is use the identity for angle addition, cosine of a plus b, where a is pi over 4 and b is pi over 4. So the identity says that this is going to be cosine of a, which is pi over 4, times cosine of b, oh, how am I doing this? Cosine of b, which is pi over 4, minus sine of a, which is pi over 4, times sine of b, which is pi over 4. Okay, pretty boring example, but let's see. Uh, at pi over 4, it's 45 degree angle, which makes an isosceles right triangle, which means all of these things are square root 2 over 2, multiplied together, but then they're also subtracted. So you end up with um, square root of 2 minus square root of 2, which gives you 0 from the identity. And we know that cosine of pi over 2 is equal to 0. So it at least appears in this situation that the first identity for cosine works. Now, you shouldn't take working in one example as a total justification or a total proof. In fact, you should be at this point asking, oh my gosh, where did that thing come from? How did you come up with that identity? Well, here's how. Okay, so to prove these identities, I've drawn a picture over here, and let's, uh, I'm going to actually draw another picture and talk about what this represents. If I draw myself a first quadrant, and I draw an angle in the first quadrant, that angle we could call alpha, which I've done over here. And instead of drawing a second angle from zero, what I'm going to do is take a second angle, start at alpha, and add it to alpha to create some angle beta. So beta is just this other small angle there. Then that would mean that the total angle represents the sum of the two angles, alpha plus beta. So in the large picture, you can see that right here. The sum of the two angles is alpha plus beta. Now, in that angle alpha plus beta, you can notice that I've created a hypotenuse of 1. So you can, you know, you're setting up angles. You can mark out any length you want. So I'm going to mark out on the terminal side of alpha plus beta, one unit long. And that would mean that if I could compute the length of this vertical line, then that vertical line would tell me the sine of alpha plus beta. And if I could compute the length of this horizontal line, then that would tell me the cosine of alpha plus beta. Because, you know, if you think about alpha plus beta as just being an angle and you ignore all the other, you know, pretend that, that it's not two angles, ignore all the other stuff going on, this is just a triangle where the vertical height is represented by the sine and the horizontal leg is represented by the cosine if your hypotenuse is 1, and it is. Um, now in this drawing, I'm going to do a little bit of sneakiness. Notice that this figure right here, when I drop those altitudes, actually creates kind of a rectangle. Um, so the angle up here and the angle I've called alpha plus beta are actually the same because the one is sort of the diagonal of that rectangle. So instead of trying to add this dotted line, I'm going to delete it to clean up the picture. And instead say that what I really want to find 
is just the height of this rectangle, like right, the, the vertical height of that rectangle. And I'll, I'll be able to find that vertical height in any way I want. And similarly, instead of finding this blue line down here at the bottom, I'm going to clear that off and say that actually what I really want to find is the horizontal length of that triangle there, just because it's, it's symmetric. So I'm going to say that these two sides are my goal. I'm trying to come up with a way to detect the length of uh, those sides of the rectangle. Now, how am I going to do it? I'm going to do it by unveiling or uncovering the rest of these pieces. Now, I've already written these out um, ahead of time just to kind of save some time and energy. Uh, of course, there's no reason, nothing that would stop you from solving this on your own if you if you wanted to. So I would encourage you, if you are you know up for a challenge, pause the video right now recreate your own version of this drawing, and then start working out and labeling some sides. I will give you a hint, which is I would solve for the orange pieces first, or the things that I've labeled as orange. Uh, so anyway, if you're going to do that, pause the video now, but if you would like to just see the proof, uh, well, we'll start right now. So I'm going to follow my, let's clear this out. I'm going to focus first on this red triangle. Because what I notice about the red triangle is that I have some angle beta inside, and I have a hypotenuse of 1. And that's nice, right? So the, the blue triangle, if you notice, doesn't actually have a hypotenuse of 1. Its, it's hypotenuse is shorter than 1. So I'm going to focus on this red one because it seems like it's the most simple. Well, within this red triangle, the opposite side to beta, if I write something like cosine, I won't do this for everyone, but if I write something like, oh, opposites, so I write something like sine of beta would be opposite over 1, right, because the hypotenuse is 1. So that means that sine of beta is just equal to the opposite. So that's what I'm going to do, is label the opposite sine of beta. And again, I don't know how big beta is, so I'm not able to assign a numerical value to this. I'm just saying that that length is sine beta using just right triangle trig, by the way, you know, it's, it's not any special kind of trig. And similarly, cosine of beta would be the adjacent over 1. So the adjacent side, I could just label as cosine, B, cosine beta. All right, so I'm going to highlight those, because those are things that I've solved for, I've found. And now I have all three sides of this red triangle labeled out nicely. But check this out. Now that I labeled out this side of the red triangle, that also is the hypotenuse of the blue triangle. So now let's focus on this blue triangle. And I'm going to try to solve for this side. Well, let's see. It's the opposite side to alpha. So if I wrote uh, sine of alpha would equal... I'll just say opposite over hypotenuse. What's the hypotenuse? Cosine beta from here. So then the opposite side here must be, if you, if you cross multiply or, or multiply this out, opposite side here must be sine of alpha times cosine beta. Which I've labeled in the diagram. Similarly, to find this base side here, I could write that cosine of alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse, but what's the hypotenuse? Cosine beta, which means that that adjacent side has to be cosine beta cosine alpha. So we'll label that in. And I'll highlight those as well. Those are pieces that I have now found. Now, I can see that I'm getting somewhere because what I'm really like searching for or looking for is um, enough pieces that I could construct. For example, the sine of A plus B. Uh, well, if I wanted to find sine of A plus B by finding the entire vertical length, what I could possibly do is find the entire vertical length of the other side over there because those have to be equal. It's, it's inside of a rectangle. So I really just need to figure out what the last two pieces here that I've circled in blue are. If I could do those, I could set up a little bit of algebra to uh, 
figure out my, my yellow sides there that I'm, I'm searching for. So let me clear this out, make some room. And let's see if we can solve for these pieces. So for this one, I'm going to focus on, uh, I guess it's not colored in. I'm going to shade this in green and call this a green triangle. Well, let's focus on this green triangle for a second. The angle at the base of this green triangle, I'm going to claim is actually equal to alpha. Now, why is that equal to alpha? Well, if you think really hard about it, in the blue triangle, that angle has to be 90 minus alpha. So it's the complement of alpha. But then, since the red triangle makes a 90 and the whole angle here is 180, this angle has to be the complement of the complement of alpha, which means that that angle is just going to be equal to alpha, just because it's a complement of a complement. Okay, so then I can do the same triangle math. Let's solve for the opposite side first. So I would write, uh, it's the opposite to alpha, so I'll write sine of alpha is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. But now what's the hypotenuse? Sine theta. So the opposite here is going to be sine alpha, sine beta. So we'll write that in. Color that in green. And let's solve for this adjacent side. I'll write that cosine of alpha, and again, I'm, I'm like thinking about this alpha right there, is equal to uh, adjacent over the hypotenuse. But what's the hypotenuse? Sine of beta. So then sine beta cosine alpha is equal to the adjacent side. Oh, wow. Okay. So I'll highlight that in. Take a second, maybe. Um, so I'm going to clear these out. Take a second, maybe, and uh, just review that you agree with the labeling on these sides. If you agree with the labeling on these sides, the identity is actually staring you in the face right now. Let's take a look. This vertical side right here, is clearly equal to this vertical side right here. So within this rectangle, what I can write is that the left side, sine of a plus b, is equal to uh, sine, I'm going to start at the bottom, sine of a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. And if you consult the list of identities, that's an identity. So that's one of the identities proven. Now let's look at the uh, vertical, horizontal, um, I already did vertical, horizontal sides. I am looking for, ooh, that's very bright, this length right here. To find that, what I need to do is take the longest bottom length, which I've solved for, and subtract from it the rest of the piece, the rest of this side. So I'm going to say that cosine of alpha plus beta is going to be equal to cosine alpha cosine beta, the bottom side, subtracted from, or subtracted by, sine alpha sine beta, that piece up there. And that's also one of the identities. Boom, done. So we've proved the two angle sum identities. But guess what? We've also proved the two angle um, subtraction identities. Why? Well, do I need to set up a whole new picture and go like, oh, okay, here's alpha, here's beta, here's alpha minus beta? No, I don't. Uh, I could, I suppose, but I feel lazy. So if I want to solve for sine of alpha minus beta, all I'm going to do is think about it as sine of alpha plus negative beta. See it? See, I need to get rid of this picture. Make some space. Now if I let me use this identity on uh, this. So then it would be the identity we already proved, 
says this would be sine of alpha cosine of negative b plus cosine of alpha sine of negative b. Well, guess what? We know some things. We know that cosine is even, and we know that sine is odd. So we know that this could simplify into sine alpha cosine of beta without the negative, because that's what an even function does. Even says that those are equivalent, plus cosine alpha times, I guess, negative 1 sine beta. That's what an odd function does. And I'm going to do one little trick, which is take, erase the plus inside there, take that negative 1 and move it out front, and make this into a minus. So that minus, because the function's odd, goes out there and just turns that into subtraction. So there you have the angle subtraction identity for sine. And let's check that for cosine too. So if I wanted to do the cosine of alpha plus negative beta, that would be cosine alpha cosine negative b minus sine alpha sine negative b. Cosine is even, sine is odd, so then this will be equivalent to cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta, again because the oddness of the function means that we can bring that negative out front and two negatives make a plus. So uh, there are the four identities, one, one, two, three, four. I'm actually going to clip this video right here, and we'll go to the next video where we'll do a bunch of examples from section 5.2.